What's the word, y'all? One trade for every NBA team before the 2022 training camp. I normally wouldn't get this any wrong because it's late August. Nobody's making trades, right? Well, the Lakers just made a trade like three days ago. So I guess anything is a possibility. But um, I saw two of the trades on Twitter this morning. And if those two trades are setting the bar for the other 28, this article ain't about to be good, y'all. But I'm here to react to some potential trades. I've been getting a lot of questions like, Kenny, where you been on Kenny for real? The reality is there's not a lot to talk about. I, I don't want to be one of those guys dropping a Kevin Durant video after every part of the rumors come out uh, or drop an entire video about Patrick Beverly being traded to the Lakers. So, you know, I've been uploading on my Kenny 2 channel, which is daily NBA content as well. Uh, just, just tune in over there if you're really interested in more. Kelly Oubre and James Booknight in the 2023 first round pick for Clint Capella. This is interesting. I did read a rumor earlier this morning about Kelly Oubre potentially being on the move. We'll see what the what the reality of that is. Uh, and the Charlotte Hornets have been trying to get a legit center for some time now. They drafted Mark Williams, which might be something for the future. But right now, they could use some help here. It's costing him James Booknight. And I understand a lot of people are turned off by James Booknight because he only played a couple games this season. In the games he played, he was shooting like 30% from the field. And he was shot chucking. He was like, I got to get my own buckets. But I, I want I wouldn't give up on him just yet. I would probably give him another year or half a year where he's getting like okay minutes to really determine uh, what he is. But I will be honest with you, his mode in the NBA is, is it's a bit rough to be a, a successful NBA player in his body, in his frame, and with his shot um, appetite, I guess is the word. Number two, the Boston Celtics trade Peyton Pritchard for Kenyon Martin Jr. in a 2024 second round pick. This is kind of another trade. Kevin Martin Jr. or Kenyon Martin Jr. Um, said that he kind of wanted out a little while ago and he's still there. So this will be a situation where he will go and probably get some minutes as a bigger wing slash forward on the Boston Celtics. And Peyton Pritchard's kind of played out of the rotation. Now you got Malcolm Brogdon, another ball handler to be on the team. Now you got Marcus Smart, Malcolm Brogdon, Jalen Brown can ball handle a, a little bit. And Jason Tatum is a ball handler. Peyton Pritchard might fall out of the rotation. But if those offseason workouts I be seeing is right, Peyton Pritchard in for a big season. Which is why we don't really pay attention to those offseason workouts. Patrick Williams' offseason workouts make him look like he's legit Kawhi Leonard. He's not. The next trade is the Brooklyn Nets getting Miles Turner. I mean, since everything is cool and gravy and they about to go in a hoop again, if you could turn um, Joe Harris, Dayron Sharp, and a first-round pick to Miles Turner, do it 100% of the time. Can you convince the Indiana Pacers to take Joe Harris's contract? Now, Joe Harris, you know, unfortunately, he had the injury last season. But before that, you know, he was pretty solid. He's actually one of the best shooters in all of basketball. Dayron Sharp flashes and then that first round pick if you're gonna build around KD and Kyrie and we're saying that we won't get another episode where KD wants out bringing in Miles Turner would be amazing because right now they don't have a good a, a lot of great center play they got Nicholas Claxton who seemed to be okay and there's rumors that Ben Simmons might be the starting center this, this season which would be dope but having a guy like Miles Turner you ain't got to worry about nothing because he's going to stretch the floor to allow Ben to do in the dunker spots stuff and he's going to block shots at the rim. This trade right here makes Brooklyn. That's a whole nother level. That's all I'm saying. Another center for the Charlotte Horn is this one being Jakob for PJ Kai Jones in the second round pick. Do we have to really react to every single trade? I'm, I'm skipping this. Chicago Bulls, Kobe White for Isaac Coro. I don't have an opinion. The Chicago Bulls were one of the worst three-point shooting teams in all the basketball last season. Kobe White, low-key, good three-point shooter. Again, we got a, a log jam at the guard position, so I understand why the Bulls fans want him traded, and I ain't saying I disagree. Um, bringing the Isaac Coro for his defense will be cool, but we also are the worst shooting team, three-point shooting team in basketball, or one of the worst three-point shooting teams in basketball. And Isaac Coro is one of the worst three-point shooting wings in basketball. So, you know... Don't know how much I love that. I do love the defense, though. I do love the defense of Isaac Coro. He's one of the better young defenders in all the basketball. So if this trade happened, I could talk myself into being excited about this. Um, but the Cavaliers, this is probably contingent on, like, if Colin Sexton is signed in trade to, like, the Mavericks or something, and they need another creator off the bench or something. Now Kobe White fits into that role. I mean, they... they I spent a lot of time in the Bulls because it's, it's the Bulls. They drafted um, Oche, Ochai who can kind of do some of the stuff Isaac Coro does on the defense and also as a plus shooter. So, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm just saying I could talk myself into this, but it's not something I'm like, oh, yay, let's do it, especially with the two seconds. And I know second round picks don't mean nothing, but I want to remind you that we got Ayo DeSumo in the second round last year. Cleveland Cavaliers, Reggie Bullock. Oh, here we go. This is exactly what I was talking about. Reggie Bullock in the first round pick for Colin Sexton. Honestly, I would rather keep Colin Sexton on that one year in the, in, in you know, 
potentially lose him in free agency to just trade him for Reggie. But like not saying that Reggie Ball is a bad player at all, but Kyle Sexton is a legit 20 point per game player off the bench. I, I, I would like that even if it is just for one last year. Dallas Mavericks, you know what? I low-key forgot that Kimba Walker was still on the roster. For some reason in my mind, he got traded there and then got like bought out, waived or whatever the words are. Um, to have in the Dallas Mavericks wouldn't be bad because they just lost Jalen Brunson unless they could fly on a guy that just two, three years ago, not even three years ago, two seasons ago, was really good in the NBA. And we're training Dwight Powell, who at this point, after we signed JaVale McGee and got Christian Woods, kind of expendable. I would do this trade in a heartbeat if I'm the um, Dallas Mavericks. And if I'm the Detroit Pistons, getting a second round pick for Kimba, which is kind of a dump, seems like a, a W to me. This is like a nothing trade that I think both organizations can look at and be like, I'll do that. Jared Vanderbilt. For, for Peyton Watson. Now, I understand that the Utah Jazz are selling some of those these pieces. We just saw uh, Patrick Beverly get traded. But I feel like V8 would have more value than just a, a rookie. Now, I guess this guy was a five-star um, guy going into college. I don't watch high school ball to know if he's actually that nice or not. Um, but I, I feel like Jared Vanderbilt might be, maybe can get you more. But maybe I'm bugging. But if I'm the Denver Nuggets, to get V8 back... And now he's actually a contributing NBA player? Dub. I don't care. I don't care about Peyton Watson at this point. We're building around Jokic in his prime. And we're building around Jamal Murray. We're building around Michael Porter. Okay, those people are not. You're building around Jokic in his prime. Having a guy like V8 would be dope. That's all I'm saying. Detroit basketball. So they would get Danny Green, who's out um, for the majority of the season or all of the season with an ACL tear. Get two second round picks and they throw in Alec Burks to the Memphis Grizzlies, who low-key can help the Memphis Grizzlies because Alec Burks is a solid NBA player. I mean, listen... If I can throw Alec Burks and get a couple picks back, I would do that in a heartbeat as well. But I legit think that Alec Burks and Nerlens Noel can help the Detroit Pistons as far as like locker room leaders and just on court being okay. Golden State Warriors. Okay, this is the trade I saw on Twitter. So brace yourself. It was Mason Plumlee, James Booknight, and two first round picks for Jordan Poole and James Wiseman. They're, they're, they're saying this because of how expensive this team is about to be because Jordan Poole is going to be up for an extension. And obviously, Jordan Poole is probably going to get a lot of money considering he's super young and just had a really, really good breakout season. And then James Wiseman, who the heck knows what's going on with him. But to say that this is the package we're getting, a guy who we just talked about played like 20 minutes in all of his rookie season and shot 30%. I'm exaggerating, but you get what I'm saying? And then Mason Plumlee who everybody considers a below average starting center and we're trading I mean two future first yay ah, I hate it I hate it I think there are ways to orchestrate this roster where you can pay Jordan Poole and feel okay about it and giving up on James Wiseman already feels a bit weird in this circumstances considering once he's up for an extension it's not like he gonna be needing a lot of money he ain't done a damn thing in the nba to warrant him wanting any money i just didn't like this trade at all if i'm the hornets two first round picks might be interesting but like lamello and jordan Poole together in the backcourt seems fun they might not defend a lot but it, <laughs> it seems fun and then james wiseman make with lamello ball throwing them lobs might be fun too i like how like certain team standard for me is like can they be fun Versus other team standards, like, are they, are this, is this trade going to make them better? Houston Rockets. Okay, this picture is intriguing. Um, Donovan Mitchell for Eric Gordon, Kevin Porter Jr., Kenya Martin Jr., o Usman Graba, first round pick from Milwaukee, which is cl close to value list. No, okay, I can't say that, but it's a late first round pick. Um, a Brooklyn Nets 2024 first round pick. I mean, that could be interesting, but again, they just committed to stay together. We'll see how long uh, that lasts. Another Brooklyn pick, and then 2028 first rounder. I don't like the straight for either side, really. Jalen Green and Donovan Mitchell in the backcourt together would, I don't know how that's working long term. You know what I'm saying? I I don't like this for either side. I legit don't like this for either side. I'm not trading Donovan Mitchell for a late first round pick, probably two late first round picks, maybe three late first round Again, the, the, the NBA is volatile and 2026, Kevin Oren can be on another team, Kyrie can be on another team, Ben Simmons can be on another team. But like, I don't like this trade for either side at all. Wow, everybody else got. I was going to say have pictures of them in jerseys. That's not true. Miles Turner got a turtleneck and a Texas Longhorn chain, which is kind of fire angle lat to you. I mean, I can't say that's a Texas Longhorn chain, but it's... Okay. Uh, Joe Harris, this is the same trade, but they traded... They, instead of putting Dayron Sharp, they put Cam Thomas. That's lazy. Kenya Martin Jr. for Jason Preston. Miles Turner, Buddy Hill. Now, this is the trade that everybody's been talking about. This is the second trade that I saw, obviously. Um, everybody was talking about this trade for the last couple days since the Patrick Beverly trade went down. And if I will say this right now, if the Lakers can somehow pull this, this trade off, the Lakers can contend with Patrick Beverly, Buddy Hill, LeBron, 
Anthony Davis, and Miles Turner, I think that starting five has defensive versatility enough where the Lakers can defend. They have offense. Now, they don't have a, a ton of shot creators over there, um, but they, they still have versatile versatility defensively. LeBron is still great. Anthony Davis bounce back season. Miles stretches the floor and allows Anthony Davis to be the position that he wants to play. Buddy Heald is a sharpshooter that LeBron ain't played with since I don't know when. And then Patrick Beverly don't miss the playoffs. Now, the benches still give you a lot to, to be desired. You got Lonnie Walker, you know. But that five makes me super excited. Now, this would basically get rid of all of their entire asset pool, though. So, like, we talk about improving that bench. It would have to be, like, halfway through the season, buyout market, boom, this player is out there, DeAndre Jordan. No, 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 that won't make the team better. But, like, buyout market, people want to play with LeBron and Anthony Davis. Um, but that starting five would be really, really interesting. I would be excited about that. And if I'm the Indiana Pacers, I'd like this trade as well because this pick, this pick now it is the Lakers and the Lakers somehow find a way to become at least competent. It seems like a lot. This pick might be the most valuable thing on the trade market right now. Now I understand we're in 2022 and we're talking seven years in the future, but this pick, I'm just saying, even this pick is top three protected, but this pick too, Memphis Grizzlies. Josh Richardson. Okay, so they're just trying to turn Danny Green, who's injured in a couple seconds, to a player that can play. I understand that. That's a lot of second round picks for Josh Richardson. Not saying that he's bad or anything. Um, maybe not as good as he was in Miami. Uh, but if I could get three second round picks and I'm the Spurs, who seem like they don't want to compete for anything anyway, why not? Got, they got a solid track record with second round picks. Miami Heat, Harrison Barnes for a Duncan Robinson, Nikola Jovich, Yurt Seven, and a first round pick. If I'm trading a first-round pick this far out in my future, I feel like I would want more than Harrison Barnes. Um, but Harrison Barnes is a really, really quality player, and he will fit the hole in that powerful position that they lost with P.J. Tucker. So I understand that. Um, but again, if I'm if I'm mortgaging this far in the future, I would want a little bit more. But similar to the Lakers, they are the Miami Heat, and they always find a way to be competitive. So maybe you don't care about this, especially if it's top seven protected. Bojan Bogdanovic for Brooke Lopez, George Hill, and a 2029 first-round pick top three protected. Similar situation. If I'm trading a pick this far out, I want a little bit more than Bogdanovich. But they're, they're the Milwaukee Bucks. But you know what? Giannis did say he might want to play in Chicago. And by this time, he might be there. Don't take none of that serious. Mike Conley and Jordan Clarkson for D'Angelo Russell in a second round pick. Ooh. We just traded Malik Beasley, who was like our off-the-bench flamethrower type. We can replace him with Jordan Clarkson, who just won six man of the year a couple years ago. Mike Conley versus D'Angelo Russell. Who's better? Who's worse? Both of them, if I'm not mistaken, on expiring deals or near expiring deals. If I'm Minnesota, I'm interested. Now, Mike Con it took Mike Conley a year to learn how to throw lobs to Rudy Gobert. Oh, he would be doing the same thing. I'm stupid. Never mind. What if Rudy Gobert's like, I just kind of want to get away from everything that was Utah Jazz related. Can I get a fresh start? D'Angelo Russell as a lob creator, is that is that even a, a, a thing? Um, it's probably better than Mike Conley. You know, probably better than Mike Conley. But D'Angelo Russell hasn't played with a legit lob threat in some time. He had V8, you know what I'm saying, who did it. And Carlton Towns is good for a couple. But uh, this will, of course, Rudy Gobert is the best lob threat he's ever played with. Garrett Temple, Kira Lewis Jr. in a second for TJ McConnell. It's interesting. I, I don't really love it just because I feel like there's a lot of ball handlers over there already. Between Zion, CJ, Vontae Graham, or oh, Kira Lewis Jr., considering he's still on the roster. I mean, I, I'm counting Brandon Ingram. You know, there's a lot of people to... Uh, Jose Alvarado, I don't know how to mention that name. I don't need to add another one of those guys. I don't like this trade. Here's the one. New York Knicks basketball, Evan Fournier, Obi Toppin, Emmanuel Quickly, one first round, a two first round, a three first round, a four. Yeah. But you know what? These picks are so far in the future, maybe it's a no. I if I'm Knicks, I'd much rather give up some of the picks that I got in draft night. Some of the closer picks. Then give up 25, 25, 27, 29. Gary Trent, Ju Gary Trent Jr. for Derek Favors, Darius Baisley, and Theo Maladon? What's the argument for the Raptors? Is it that he's on the last year of his deal and we don't know if we he's he going to go somewhere else? Because that, if that's all I can really think about. Because everything else, why would I trade Gary Trent Jr. for this? Ew, I'm, I'm, Toronto, I'm the Toronto Raptors. We were just a playoff team. And we're probably going to be better this year because people are going to get older and get more experience under their belt. I'm not trading Gary Trent Jr. for this. That's, that's terrible. Oh, but if I'm the OKC Thunder, I'm probably not either because if he's on the last of his deal, Chet Holmgren just tore his something, get well soon. Not tore, just had some problems. So he's going to be done for the season. 
Am I just doing this so Shay can be like, oh, we got somebody that can hoop? I, I don't love it. Orlando Magic. D oh, this trade I love. Okay, maybe not this exact one, but the idea of Donovan Mitchell and Orlando, I absolutely love it. If it does only cost John Isaac and giving up on Jalen Suggs after one season, Terrence Ross, the Bulls pick from this season, a 25 and 27, I like this. Having Paolo, Markel, Cole Anthony still on the roster, Wendell, you got uh, you got Franz. I'm just saying, if, if I'm at all these trades so far, the one that makes me the most excited as far as fun factor is Donovan Mitchell playing with Ben Carroll. Um, Corey Joseph for Thibel, skip. <laughs> like, come on. Suns get Terrence Ross. Terrence Ross should be traded, but they say they love him in the locker room and everything. That's why he hasn't been moved yet. Um, for Landry Shaman, I mean, they be passing Landry Shaman around since his rookie season, so I guess that's fine. Uh, but he would add another element of bench creation, something that they haven't had in Phoenix. The Portland Trailblazers, Portland Trailblazers get Kenrich, who can't be traded. So why the, the name of this article are trades before training camp. He can't be traded before training Skip. Um, Wiggins, ooh, Wiggins on the move. HB going back to the Warriors. And Kevin Herter, who can't be traded until August 30th. No. Who walks out of this trade thinking that they did a good job? If I'm the Spurs and this package comes across, I'll probably say yeah. As a team that's young and, and in the rebuild, even though they do have a lot of guards over there, I would take a fly on James Booknight. It feels weird. James Booknight doesn't seem like a guy that would be a pop guy, but who knows? Who knows? We get like some relatively young players for Jakob, who if I'm not mistaken on last year of his deal, and then Josh Richardson, and I could I could get James Booknight. Just I'm I'm acting like James Booknight is his high commodity. He's really not. But he is a guy coming off a rookie season where he didn't really play. And that holds some value. Oh. I think OG Ananobi's more valuable. I legit think OG Ananobi's more valuable than Miles Turner. I guess that's why they're saying that they get a first round pick in it as well. Mm, I just, I like OG Ananobi a little bit too much to trade him for Miles Turner, personally. Here's another version of the New York Knicks Utah Jazz trade. And this one gives you the picks from the recent, like the next couple years. And if I'm the Knicks, I'd rather do this package of um, picks. 2023, 2023, that's ours. And then the Washington Wizards pick that's lottery protected. 2025, 22, that's a lot of picks. But it is, you don't have to worry about 2029 being thrown in there. Q Grimes, who, oh, I don't know, because Q Grimes is in it. I don't know. I watched that boy Q Grimes, Q Grimes light it up in Summer League. I don't know if I want to trade, bro. The last one is John Collins and Justin Holiday who probably can't get traded to August 30th, just like Kevin Herter, because they were literally traded for each other. So why would... Okay. Um, Kuzma, Will Barton, Rui Hachimura. That's interesting. Who walks out of this and saying that we did, our, we did the best we could in this one? I mean, if I'm Washington, I'm getting this package. We kind of gave up a lot of depth. Now, we do still have Denny D over there, which can help on the wing. Of course, Bradley Beal and Monte Morris and Porzingis. That, that would be okay, I guess. But this is one of those trades that feels like nobody walks out and say that they won. Nobody feels confident that they were successful in making the trade. It's a deal to be done because we needed a deal to be done. And as I'm recording this video, a report has come out. The Jazz are accelerating spider trade, want to get the deal done before training camp. So you will see me relatively soon, baby, if that trade goes down. Let me know what was your, your favorite trade, your worst, the worst trade. I, I'm done talking.